What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Off the Rails, a recovery podcast dedicated to ending the stigma of addiction through open discussion on all things recovery related. My name is Mark, and with me always are David Jarrett. And today we have another very special episode. Yes, today sir. is Mr. Dave's one year of sobriety. Congratulations, Dave. Thanks, boys. Joy- it's a pleasure joining the club with you guys. I'm glad to have you. Thanks, bud. Fellas, what's happening? How have your weeks been? Dave? Yeah, week's been week's been good. Uh, I won't get into a whole lot. I, on the weekend, uh, I was way at the tournament there. Things went well. I had my own room. All that stuff was good. It doesn't seem like the coaches are, I don't know about the parents, but... Uh, <laughs> they're much they're much of partiers at all either so uh they're they're kind of all business about hockey and then just got back started working got to see duke missed him when i was away that's about it man oh, man that's it one year one year sober today how does it feel feels about the same as lot yesterday it is cool i think i was mentioned well i'll get into it later maybe but it is cool, like being through a whole calendar year of like calendar events, you know, like different things that you might face, like birthdays or different holidays and shit. You're still gonna have other stuff come up, but like, I don't know. At least you're kind of dealt with all that stuff that can come in a calendar year. So, uh, I guess the only one is Halloween because we had Halloween together at Newgate. So, the cool thing now, and this is really cool is that you can reflect and be like, what was I doing a year ago? And you were sober, right? Yeah. That's pretty yeah. fucking cool. Yeah. Halloween at Newgate was fun too, though. I remember walking the streets with you guys. Oh, yeah. It was that, yeah, Halloween. And the night before, I remember walking around with, it was the three of us. I think Mike was maybe with us too. Yeah. Devil's Night. Yeah, remember, uh, remember Buddy, uh, they did that by that like white building. They had the almost like a scarecrow thing with like mooning with two pumpkins for oh, the yeah. cheeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was pretty sweet. Some good decorations up in Merrick, though. It's a beautiful town. Yeah. How was your week, Jared? Uh, my week is good. I actually, speaking of Merrick, I went back there on s- Friday. Was it Friday? No. Check out this picture in front of Jared. In, at Newgate, yeah. So, like, so uh, I think it was Friday, actually. Yeah, I went back there on my one year, uh, and we went to the Merrickville Fall Fair. That was pretty cool. Sweet, the petting zoo and stuff. Um, and I celebrated my one year medallion at AA with my parents and Bree. Um, and yeah. Feeling pretty grateful. It was a good night. And uh, Christopher came to celebrate. And I got him to get up and uh, thank the speaker. And he did a great job. As usual with Christopher, you know, well-spoken he is and how he speaks from the heart all the time. So it was nice seeing him. And uh, happy as heck to be on here tonight with Dave for his one year. So... Oh, and I also, this week, I was, I didn't work at all. I was sick. I stayed, I was sick. I had a bug uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Monday. Did I even tell you guys? No. First, no. I've, first I've heard about it. Yeah. So I haven't yeah. even worked all week. So, yeah. It's been uh, a crappy, no pun intended. Uh, oh, was it, a, was it a crappy bug? It was a crappy bug. Oh, <laughs> a lot of poop. Yeah. <laughs> and there, my friend. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I'd rather uh, be sick with the flu than be hung over any day. Yes. Or have the Colombian flu, which is a horrible time. Oh, yeah, that's pretty brutal, too. Yes, sir. How about you, Marcus? Uh, my week was Ben has been. I don't awesome. know why I said that. Sorry. Yeah, my week's been great. Um, Set my new sober best today for bike ride. Did 18 kilometers today. Well, did you do 18 kilometers? 17, 17.99. <laughs> right. um, 
I'm going to have a new one on Saturday, though. Saturday's going to be my longest bike ride to date. I'm aiming for like 20 to 25. Well, what's but the time? The time? And like an hour takes me to do, it took me 56 minutes today to do 17.99. Nice. Um, you must be dressed, you must be dressed up pretty warm, eh? Yeah, I got a new, I got a new biking outfit this week. I look pretty fashionable out there. <laughs> Do you get that, like, exercising out in the cold, do you get that, like, stinging feeling in your lungs? Uh, it hasn't been, like, today, it warmed up pretty nice today, but fuck, this morning, man, it was minus one when I went to the soup kitchen. It didn't like that. Guests, no, we... guests also didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No. Um... Can, you, can you get Rebecca to take a picture of you in your biking outfit? We can put it up? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, I've been loving the workout videos. It's I've been fun. really into working out lately. Yeah, you're lifting big. I'm trying. Got some goals to accomplish by the end of the year in the gym and biking. Um, I also, if you haven't noticed, if you're if you're not watching the video, I got my hair cut, and it was a very sad day for me because um, I. Uh, I didn't cut my hair lengthwise very much. Like I trimmed off all the dead shit, I guess. Um, but I let my hair grow out for my full first year of sobriety. And it was, uh, it was, I really miss it. I miss putting it up in a bun and. New year, new you. Anyway, Rebecca's toast. It looks, it looks good. I also, I also miss it, but it looks good too. Yeah. I think it'll probably come back. It should grow back. It should. That's what they say. I, I hope. Other than that, man, uh, been a good week, man. Pretty just going through the motions here this week. Went to a meeting Tuesday. I uh, had a great Thanksgiving with Rebecca's family. And uh, yeah, man, um, had one day where I was a bit homesick. I was telling, telling Dave about it. Uh, I don't know. I just miss my family and and just being back home a bit. Um, yeah. But other than that, man, everything's good in Lethbridge, Alberta, for me personally. Um, and yeah, that's it. Yeah. Just did a nice. great, just did a, recorded a great episode with you guys. Um, yeah, it was real good. Yeah. He was funny as shit, man. Real funny. Yeah, that yeah. one's going to be a banger. His, his, I love a Boston accent too, man. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Reminds me of Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. 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 Oh, you know what? Too, Mark, I forgot to tell you. You know how like weird things happen in sobriety? Yeah. <clears throat> so I just, I, like for the one year medallion, you pick a speaker and that kind of stuff. The speaker I picked, I didn't really know his story much. Yeah. And he's got a lot of sober time. It was, it was just like, just weird. Cause so I never knew, but he was from Newfoundland. Hey, yo. Yeah. A fishing town. Now I forget what it's called. I'll get back to you on that later. Okay. But I'm sure it's near. And then Bree was there and he, uh, overcame cancer which i didn't know and she has too mm -hmm. so like just those weird coincidences happen yeah 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 that's can't wait for, yeah yeah that's cool man and all right should we talk about rachel Ra rachel sober, sober. where is she sober in central park sober in central park we got rachel she was dope bow, bow, bow. <laughs> She was dope. <laughs> different, uh, different take on sobriety from our previous guests, right? But uh, yeah. as long as you're staying sober, I'm proud of you. That's. I really like this podcast because like the, the different ways to get sober that you can learn about that could help anyone is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're yeah. doing it. It was. It was kind of cool having that contrast, like back to back interviews with uh tom very anti of the uh, mocktails and the zero percenters and then she's very much 
into them. So it just yeah. goes to show you, too, like, yeah, as long as you're staying sober, yeah. who cares? And she's, like, good friends with one of our first guests we had on, Sober and Funky. Shout out, Paige. Yeah. Shout out, Paige? Yeah, they were all, um like, and she met up with, like, uh, I seen on Instagram, she met up with uh, Soba Sisters. Oh, yeah? And, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. Small world. Yeah. That's funny. You know she, what? Uh, really started like opening up through the podcast too, which I liked. Yeah. You know what I was thinking too is uh just to rebuttal on like Tom's are you like you know how you're saying how like uh a lot of cebre- celebrities kind of some are having those like sober brands that they're coming out with and stuff like that and kind of you know, maybe some people are doing it because it's trendy or whatever, but, you know, it also could be like, maybe they are supportive of that because they have someone really close to them. Yeah. And maybe that, you know, that person is actually the one that's kind of spearheaded it and they're just kind of using their name to kind of get it out there. And so you shouldn't really, you know, judge it just without really knowing either. I don't know. I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I got no issue with it personally. Um, no, I think it's I think it's cool. And then if you can be sober and drink non-alcoholic drinks and enjoy life, then so be it. Yeah. Like that's sweet for you. Yeah. If you if that is a solution to the problem of drinking for you, then by all means. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, guys? Just oh. just, yeah, just don't don't slug back a 12 pack of uh point fives. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to get the point zero 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 zeros. The point zero five still contain alcohol. Zero point yeah. percent. Oh, you know what else too? I was listening to Steve-O's podcast. He had his uh, fiance on. He made a good point of uh, like for him where he is, it doesn't really people drinking around him doesn't really bother him. He said yeah. what really bothers him, what like, he hates, is when he's around and, and uh, someone's smoking pot and having to inhale someone else's weed. Now, that's a good point. So if you're a weed smoker, be uh, courteous of uh, your surroundings, you know, yeah. especially uh, nowadays, it's nowadays it's so, such more prevalent and around and people are much more open with it. Right. So, man, I agree with that big time. Yeah. That's a great point, Dave. And yeah. if I can like smell it, like, I don't know. The smell of it to me is so fucking triggering. I find how bad would you guys want to like, I'd love to have Steve on the podcast and shoot the shit with him. Oh yeah. Be great He's so cool. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. I agree with that. But yeah, man. I find the smell of weed just like, I don't know. I instantly get like a craving when I smell it. Yeah. And fuck, today when I was on my bike ride, every, every time, this like one corner i fucking smell pot every single time I'm like, really? fuck. so today i stopped and i like looked around it's just a big ass fucking pot plant there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i was like there there you go there it is but i kept biking that explains it yeah where there's smoke there's fire as they say that is true so what else did we like about Rachel's episode? I liked it. Yeah, it was just different. Uh, it was cool having, I like having like the variety. Like we've had, like we've, I don't remember all of our guests as far as our stories, like offhand we've had consecutive lately, but there's been a lot of like, you know, some very, I don't know to call it hardcore, or, like tough, you know, homelessness or uh, jail and stuff like that. And so I think sometimes not everyone can relate to as far as like going down that far of a uh, a hole or whatever you want to call it right but Rachel's is much more relatable probably to like a lot of people that may not even think that they have an issue per se so yeah. uh, I don't know if that makes sense but oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Um, one thing I really liked man about her episode was how um, she just started out with a month, right? And that's what I find cool about sober October. And like, you know what? Just give it a fucking shot and see if see if it if you like it, like how your body starts feeling. Um, 
And that's what she did, right? She started out with being like, I'm going to do the dr a dry January. And then that, you know, her, I guess her family challenged her to it, right? Yeah. And she started seeking the benefits of it. It was like, you know what? I'm sticking with this. I found that pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I, yeah, that is sweet because I kind of like, I envied that too. And she said that because I tried every sober October, dry January to do it. Yeah. And I just, like I couldn't do it. Yeah, I think I tried a sober October once and I lasted like fucking one day. Two yeah. Days. yeah. And you're probably just in a recovery mode from the <laughs> yeah. last like that's what happened with me. I was just yeah, like went hard and then I yeah, just didn't was in bed for a few days and then just went back at it again. So yeah. See in the in the past I, I've uh I've done a dry January um you know years ago i told you guys i did like three months but uh that was a while ago but i think if you do do that and then like you're finding success like and you think you maybe had an issue before and you started to do it like you did a month it's important to uh really build on tools and, and reach out and find other tools because like that's something i never did it was just like kind of as jared jared would say dry knuckling it through yeah. for for the for the month and then like yeah, you just kind of go back you just kind of go back to your ways so like yeah definitely try it and then like if you're liking it kind of really there's lots of things available that can kind of help you know go longer so you might need those tools i don't know i'm just rambling today no, can we get into that. just asking dave some questions absolutely <laughs> absolutely we can it's Dave's first year. One year. Let's ask him some. Let's ask him some questions, Jared. You're up. I'm up. Yeah, Dave. Jared. So when you were first in re like when we first met, remember in rehab when I would always say, "Dave, are you uh, ever gonna drink again?" <laughs> yeah. Were you when you went into rehab? Were you sure that you wanted to quit? forever or did you just want to kind of learn how to slow down drinking uh i don't know i i wasn't sure actually like it's funny because i like I, I didn't really tell like my family early on right like my sister and my like i i talked to my sister steph my brother-in-law uh when i was driving when i was driving down south and my brother-in-law did ask me he's like so like are you gonna drink like are you gonna like, just like learn how to drink or like you know what do you think i was like i don't know because i didn't really know what the program was about or anything like that and then uh i don't know like when i was there i just wasn't sure if like i'd be able to do it um i definitely knew i couldn't drink the way i was Cause it's just, I was in a miserable, very, um, depressed and, you know, I truly believe I couldn't really get out of that without cutting the booze out. Um, I know that now wasn't going to happen. So yeah, at the time, I think the first time you asked me that it was like, I don't know how early on in it was, but I wasn't sure actually when you even asked me that. And then I think you asked me like later on and I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I think I realized I was, I was done uh, with the booze and the drinking. So it just, it's, I, I think for me, it was the hardest thing was like losing that crutch, right? Like, fuck, like that you're vulnerable and being, having, having to deal with things like without having that constant crutch to kind of go to, to kind of escape and just take the easy way out. I don't know. Did you feel like you could never have fun again, too? Yeah. 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 Drinking's, so drinking's funny in that regard where, like, people actually ask you, like, are you going to learn how to drink? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, like, I don't know, I'd ask, like, I, I got to ask, too, like, so are you going to, like, can you smoke pot or, like, it's like, no, I don't, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you when I get back. I don't really know, but. Yeah. Like it's frowned upon. So yeah. You never you were never a big pot smoker, anyways. 
Great. It's funny because I, 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 I did get into it for a while, uh, probably like my early 20s, where I smoked. I was smoking dope with my roommate at, and um, like he always had it and I never bought it. And I, but I was getting high all the time and I found myself so unmotivated when I was doing that. And like I couldn't watch TV or play video games or do anything unless I was high. And I was able to kind of cut that out, but I just substitute for drinking. So, um, but I remember, I remember like not wanting to smoke again because of that, where I was just like, I don't want to get down that path where I just have no motivation when I wake up. That's kind of how I felt. And then when I drank, anytime I smoked, I just fall asleep. So I just didn't like that. So I kind of never really mixed the two. Dave. I have questions here for you. That's why I've been on my phone. I've been trying to pull up these questions. Got some, yeah, viewer, absolutely. Got some viewer questions for the kid. But you know hey. who they're from. They're from one of our best viewers. Shout out, Jason. Much love. And thank you for helping us. Yeah. Shout out, Jason. Love you, Jason. Here's a question. Is there anything about recovery you have found easier or harder than you would have expected? Well, you can't, you can't just repeat the question you <laughs> asked, Jerry. <laughs> good question, though. It's good. Same question. <laughs> it is. It is good. It is good. I, I, I got to go harder first. First thing that pops out is like, it kind of, I wanted to ask our last guest about it a little bit more, but you know, that, when you get sober, you kind of think that like all of a sudden all your bad days are going to go away. And you're not going to have to deal with that stuff anymore. At least I did. Where it was like, oh, it's going to fix everything. And it's not really the case. Like I'm sick right now. You still get, you're not, you're not Superman all of a sudden. Like you still get sick, you still have bad days. I think early on that was a bit of a struggle for me because I felt like, oh, am I not doing recovery? am I not doing it properly? Like, am I not doing the right things because I shouldn't have these bad days or like, you know, you know what I mean? So I found that a bit of adjustment. Um, I found that difficult for a while. Um, and I didn't think it would, I still have a long way to go as far as talking a lot, like opening up. Uh, but I have been doing a lot more of that. And I found it easy to, Maybe it helps like surround yourself. Yeah, it definitely helps surround yourself with good people, but I find it easy to like, open up and talk about feelings and like with, with certain people that like you're like you guys, you know, or I, and it, again, actually maybe it's cause it's fresh on our last interview. Cause he kind of talks about it too, but I have some good friends uh, and, and like you guys, I like, consider family and I find it easy to show, emotion and like you know say i love you and shit like that where i never did before and maybe it gets a little bit much with some of my buddies i'll always i'll always say i love you or whatever sometimes but <laughs> are on text and they think i'm crazy but I, don't know, I, never, I never i never did that shit before i never did that before and it feels kind of just easy and natural to do that now uh where i never kind of considered that before showing being vulnerable i guess right so I don't know if that, I think that answers the questions. I think Great answer. Well. Dave. Thanks. Do you want me to keep going with Jason's questions? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the same as Jared's. <laughs> you, just, you just copy and paste. You put no thought into these ones for me. I think it, he may have. But um, anyway, still appreciate you. Yeah. What is your number one recovery tool? Uh, mine's, I know, I, I think it's got to be, uh, and I don't know what I'm going to do when I move out of here, but the sauna and uh, doing my meditation in there is probably uh, number one for number one for me. Besides, like doing the podcast and listening to interviews and and chatting with you guys and 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 cutting them because those are kind of like. I kind of consider that my almost like my meetings and stuff like that. Um, and uh, so I would say that, and actually I would say, I would say hit the, hit the gym has been big for me as well. Cause I've, 
I don't know. Everything's kind of tough to correlate because summertime, it's always, I find it a little bit easier to be in a better mood, but I've been much more consistent with the, with hitting the gym and exercising over the summer. So I don't know if it's, if it's both, or I definitely find a, uh, a lot helpful for my mood when I, when I'm extra, when I'm hitting the, hitting the weights. So any of those three, all combination of all three walking, walking Duke daily. I like that answer. Yeah. Thanks. Jared, do you want to jump in or you want me to keep banging these out? Uh, I can jump in for a quick question. Sweet. Get in there. <clears throat> a year ago today, where did you see yourself? Did you, did you think you would make it a year? Uh, I don't know. I don't actually think I even thought about it. Uh, I never, like a year ago, I was kind of getting ready to go. Um, cause I wasn't, I wasn't at Newgate yet a year, right a year ago. So I was kind of re getting ready to go. I never thought about a year down the road. Um, so I didn't know where I was going to be, uh, honestly. Um, yeah, I guess I was hopeful I'd be sober, but I never thought, yeah, I never, short answer, I never really thought about where I would be in a year, a year do ago. Ever, do you ever, like, find yourself, like, looking ahead too much or no? Or are uh, you, yeah, Are you sometimes. comfortable just? Sometimes, I think. Sometimes I look too far ahead and like kind of, kind of, that's where I kind of get down on myself a little bit as far as like where I'm at right now. Um, you know, not really having a career or, you know, living, living at the cottage at home, like kind of get down on myself a little bit from where I was as far as like professionally speaking before I moved back to the Sioux and, uh, but I don't know. For the first, for the first time, also, I think with like the sobriety, like I mentioned to you guys before, where I feel like that progression of uh, my mental, like your mental health, and like when I think back of two months ago, where I, I back then I thought I was like in a really good place, and fast forward two months, I'm like, no, I wasn't. You know, I wasn't even close to where I am now. It's just, it's nice seeing that. Uh, evolution i guess where i never really think i had that before i you know two years ago i can think back you know two months prior and i was just kind of stagnant you know i don't feel that stagnant anymore i feel like I'm, I'm i'm constantly evolving a little bit and bettering myself so that's kind of a nice feeling and i i try not to focus too much on the future um well, that's great because my next question is purely based on the future. <laughs> this should go. This should go over well then. Yes. Um, the next question I have for you, Dave, is um, you know, with all this growth that you were seeing, you know, you you look back and you see continuous growth over the months. Uh, do you have any goals or achievements that you see yourself growing towards over the next year? Uh, I try not to think about too much about the future. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, well, I, you know, physically, you know, one of the things like I, I wrote when we had to do that exercise new game is like, you know, kind of where you, where you want to be or whatever it was. I can't remember how it worked. I asked Jared this kind of question. I, I should have looked it up. That's my bad, but something to do with my, um, your goals or whatever. I just wanted to be in like the best shape I've been in physically and mentally. It was important to, you know, add the mentally in there, uh, that I've been in, in my life. And without a doubt, I can say, I, you know, I still have a lot of work to do, but mentally for sure, I, uh, I'm in the best shape of my life and I want that to continue because like I said, there's still a lot of work and physically I'm not in the best shape, but I'm, I just bought pants the other day, size 34, where I was, I was out of rocking a 38. So 
feel pretty good about that. So, my man, nice. You know, yeah, that's sweet. Feels feels a little better. So, you know, that's that's good. And then as far as as far as goals, I mean, there's there's some things I would like, but are you know a little bit out of my control at times. Where I like to be working a full time career. When I say career, I just mean like something that I'm passionate about that I don't consider a, a jo- like a, a job. So I like to be working towards that. And, um, you know, house, uh, I like to get into a, you know, a relationship. Um, you know, they said to take a year before you jump into a relationship. That's what they recommend at Newgate. And, uh, I wasn't really following that by choice. It just sort of, uh, <laughs> yeah. sort of, sort of happened, but you're ready to go right now, buddy. But Hey, I'm a rule follower apparently. So, there you go. uh, yeah. So like those things, obviously. And, um, yeah, I, I look at things a lot differently as far as relationships too before that I did kind of before. So I'm happy I've, I've taken some time cause I might not have uh, fully been where I should be before I jump into something. So anyway. Dave, yeah, Dave, just like even from the outside looking in, it you're pretty like it's you, you seem like blessed to be able to have like a full year to work on yourself and like try to figure things out rather than like be so busy all the time and just like not be able to manage your like mental health as well so i think it's great how things have panned out for you yeah thank you no it it has been really good that's actually that's actually maybe something um i could throw in there that i found easier than i expected would be you know as much as i secluded myself with my drinking a lot of times and kind of uh what do you call it what's the word i'm looking for when you what's the other word you seclude yourself what's the word we always use you're on mute mark <laughs> sorry i i farted Iso- isolate? I, isolate 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as much as much as i do that too i was always like wondering what people are doing or like why why is that person like uh i always wanted to like I don't feel like I'm missing out on something, but I found being sober now, like working on recovery. Like, I don't really think about that at all. I like, I don't care. Like, I just, I'm happy doing my thing and um, I'm not too worried about like that sort of stuff. If that makes any sense. On one hand, it's weird because I always isolate, but on the other hand, I always felt like, you know, I'd always want to be doing something with people that, really don't not that they don't matter but it i shouldn't really worry about that those people that they don't want to spend time or whatever right do you think the fomo like got like was a big part of your drinking too uh i don't know i don't think so not really i just no no it's, i don't i don't know i wouldn't i don't i don't think so <laughs> It's kind of a weird, it's kind of a hard thing for me. To, I don't even know if I explained that properly, that last part, but I don't know if you guys can, re- I don't know if you guys can relate at all or if you know what I'm talking about, but like, I don't know. I'm just going to cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> I so, another viewer question, question come in. Yeah. If you got a Mount Rushmore, four people that are influential in your recovery, who are you putting on there? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, like people, is that, is that people that are uh, all sober people? I don't think it would have that's, to be. That's what it says. Oh, does it? Mount Rushmore and the four people in recovery he put there for you. Oh, well, I would say, well, you guys take, you guys take two spots right there. Hello. So. 
now I'm down, now I'm down to two. And uh, I got to go, I got to go with uh, Jim. Oh, even though I don't, yeah, Jim Thompson, even though, even though I don't talk to him that often, he was big on uh, getting me to where I, I needed to go. Um, and then uh, a buddy, Jeremy, who was one of the other people that I opened up to, uh, it was him and Jim are basically the, the two people I opened up to where I really felt like I, when I was breaking down and, and needed to, to really get help. Uh, they're the first two people I, I talked to, uh, cause I found out he was sober. Um, he had worked for me at can, at Canland. He was playing for the York, York university team. And, uh, I had found out that he was sober and just kind of talked and, uh, anyway, so I opened up to him. So definitely, uh, definitely those. And then, uh, my dad, obviously my dad too, cause he's, uh, he's sober. And, um, so it's nice being able to have him to talk, talk to and stuff as well. So that's a great answer. Great question too, by the way. That was good. That was a good question. Um, I do have one more here for you too, buddy. Let's hear it. Knowing what you know now, if you could go back and give yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? I would say that uh, getting sober is definitely living living a sober life is definitely a uh, much better life than than what you were doing back then, and much better than drinking and wasting your time and feeling like shit and uh, being miserable. So, the quicker you can do it. And this is advice to like other people, like quicker you can figure it out, the better. And uh, whatever way you can do that, if you need to go to rehab or you don't need to, if you gotta go need some help, whatever, there's lots of different uh, uh, resources out there. So just get cracking, get on it and uh, your life will be much better. Excellent answer. Yeah. Thanks. Whew. Just want to say I'm proud of you, buddy. Well, thanks, man. I'm proud of you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I said to you this morning, it's been an honor to be a part of your journey. And uh, glad I got to see that growth that you just talked about, man. Yeah. Thanks, bud. No problem. Appreciate that. Right back at you. Appreciate it. Yeah, Dave, thanks. Uh, I don't even think you know it, but you affect, well, you help me like it, uh, at least once a week. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate that. And yeah, the growth is incredible. You look way younger. Um, <laughs> yeah, love you and I'm proud of you. Um, Boy. I also have another question. Yes. Uh, acceptance how big of a factor has a acceptance played in your year of sobriety um pretty big man like well i mean i mean really like one of the things i really struggled with was uh i mean i talked about before but uh my brother's death and um and uh you know, it was something so simple, something so small and simple. But, you know, one of our counselors said, like, you know, where are you at, you know, with uh, stages of uh, uh, grieving, whatever, right? And I never got to acceptance. And, uh, and then, you know, he had just said, like, what would your brother want? And <clears throat> don't you think he'd want you an acceptance? And, uh, yeah, man, that kind of hit, hit me pretty, uh, pretty hard uh because of course you'd want that and um yeah man like obviously it doesn't make it any easier if anyone's going through a shitty time or whatever like you know just saying accept uh, you accept it doesn't make uh not having that person around anymore any easier but it's it's 
being able to, uh, you know, realize that you're not doing yourself any good and, and that person wouldn't want you cause any more harm to yourself than, uh, you know, because, because of them not being there either. So, you know, that's, that was a huge first part of acceptance. And then I think accepting that being alcohol don't get along is also uh, a big, big acceptance too. Right. And I'm powerless if you will. And uh, so that's, that's uh, kind of the second thing that I, I realize is with acceptance too. So I also accept that uh, I, I uh, don't particularly like, when uh focuses on me so uh we can move on that's a good answer that is i agree i i don't like when the focus on me either man yeah yeah that's i say that every na meeting when i share i'm just like i'm just fucking panicking right now and i don't i don't know i've got nothing yeah like getting put on the spot to talk horrible and then it all comes right after it. You're like, damn it, I should have said this, could have said that. Yeah. Like being in your own head. Yeah. It's the worst. It's the worst when you're telling stories and then like you're into a story and you're like, I just want to get out of this so fast. And I don't even want to tell it anymore. I wish you could just stop talking. Or, or have you guys like looked back at all like our first few podcasts and seen the difference? Like, well, the only one I watched, sorry, the only one I watched recently was uh, was Mark's there, and uh, yeah. Besides what I said before about like just more of the strength of Mark's voice, whatever. But like, I noticed like just I was so uncut too, or it was just a lot different and kind of. But it's the way it goes. I'm gonna do that this week. I know. I sometimes like go back and watch old ones, and then we'll watch like a new one and the difference between the two, like, I don't know. I don't really look at myself because it's like, I kind of still cringe, but even the both of you guys, like how much more confident you guys are, it's pretty cool to watch. Yeah. I've got a little, I've got, I have gotten a little better watching myself when I'm doing the cutting now. I used to fucking hate it. I used to just fast forward and just hope hope that it went okay. But still, still don't like it. But it's gotten a little easier. Yeah, I found watching it, um, like watching episodes back, I kind of like picked up on things that I would do and kind of try to fix them. Yeah. For instance, saying you know, um, you know, saying um, I'm bad for that. Wow. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> See, now that now that I'm thinking about it, like I'm gonna do them all. Yeah. yeah. And making sure the person's finished, like that one's really hard. And sometimes it gets really hard with certain guests, like where you want to you want to jump in and ask a question, but they're not finished talking. But you got to jump in because if not, then you got two hours of just talking, right? Yeah. yeah. You guys know what I'm saying? So they're, I don't know. I, I still struggle with that one, obviously. That's hard. That's like one of the hardest things. Yeah. Yeah. Find yeah. that exact time to jump in. Yeah. And then, you know what? I like, I, f- I feel like every time I go to talk, I always cut one of you guys, like, jump in when you guys are about to talk. So I really try to, like, watch when I can tell that you guys are about to talk and I still do it. <laughs> but I mean, we're learning, yeah. growing. It's a process. And the more podcasts I listen to, it happens to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It's inevitable. Yeah. Mark, we'll do, you, do you have any more qu- good questions for Dave? Um, so many. That's the real. <laughs> so many. Um, not maybe not one year recovery related, but I could, I could, asking questions all day how's Barnaby <laughs> <laughs> Barnaby's Barnaby's good Barnaby's good Duke's good they miss, they miss you they miss you man yeah. come back and see him again yeah 
I'm thinking about getting Mila a puppy. Yeah. Let them like grow up together, kind of create that bond. Yeah, awesome. Get a big, get a big dog. Yeah, and I wasn't really a big dog guy until I met uh, Duke and Barnaby, man. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah. And they, they're like, Barnaby's like the biggest. Duke's a little different. Duke will like bark at you and possibly scare you. Yeah. Barnaby will bark at you, but then he'll just like wag his tail and like loves you. Yeah. Duke sometimes might, like he's not going to bite you, but you might think he might. But he was good with you. I'm like the dog. I'm a dog whisperer. <laughs> yeah. Um, what uh, what work at regime you got going on right now? What's tomorrow? Tomorrow I got to get into chest and tries. I I've actually missed the last couple of days because I've been I've been sick. I haven't been feeling well, so uh, feel a little better tonight. Even if I'm not 100, percent I'm gonna get myself in there to do to do uh chest and tries even if it's not full full out yeah that'll boy gotta get going so i don't know i'm in the i'm in the mode now where i feel like i've i've gotten down and weight a little bit now i want to put on uh, a little more size on my mu- on the muscles you know yeah yeah so i don't know i'm just making it up <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta cut it out. <laughs> Jared, you hit the gym this week? Uh, no, I got sick, but I'm going tomorrow morning. Okay, good stuff, buddy. I did. I got my membership. Can't wait to hear about it. Yeah. Nice. Where are you going? Planet Fitness. Nice. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. Uh, I don't even know how that's gonna go, but uh, I'm gonna give her a go. Got to start somewhere again. Absolutely, man. Just go into an easy uh, full body or full upper body. Just, you know, exercise each body part. Get it loosened up. And then, Should I start, uh, with, start with legs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heavy. It's heavy as you way have to go back Sunday. <laughs> uh, yeah, heavy as you can, so you can't walk for a week. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, fellas. Okay, I gotta eat some dinner. Yeah, I could eat as well. All right, guys, if you or somebody you know struggling with addiction, please reach out and ask for help. Thank you for listening. Dave, congrats on one year, baby. Congrats. Let's thank you. <laughs> <laughs>